Alrighty, so I prayed about doing this video and some of you are just not going to like it, but I feel this is one of the things that God has called me to do. Oftentimes God will use people in the Bible to address certain groups of people, uh, kingdoms, nations with a specific message. And so there was something that was just on my heart last night and many of you have seen my video, uh, that videos that I've made before about whether it's the police um, injustice or it's the, the crime in the hood, I try to talk about all of it. I try to have balance and, and be fair because my personal view is that wrong is wrong, okay? And we should be able to call out wrong. We should be able to call out sin at all times, okay? So <clears throat> I'm not going to try to be long-winded about this. I'm just going to tell you guys something that happened, and this is why I have a perspective the way that I do. So my youngest, um, my youngest son's mother, I never forget. Okay. She, uh, you know, she had family on the South side of Chicago and the South side, there's some very bad places. West side, there's some very bad places. And I'll never forget. She called me on the phone, just crying. And, and I mean, she was, she was crying it was obvious she was terrified, she was running, she was breathing hard, and um, it was uh, on Aberdeen, okay? Uh, for those of you who are familiar with Chicago, around in that area, you know, you got 95th, 96th Street, and she was just screaming and she was crying, and I remember this feeling of helplessness, I'm like, what's going on, what's going on, what's going on? And she was so scared, she couldn't even really talk, right? And I'm thinking about my kids, like, man, something happened to my kids, something about to happen to my child's mother. And she's like, they're shooting up the block. They just shot up the block. And she told me how she was walking, okay, down the street, and some young guy told her, hey, man, go inside. So watch, watch this. He told her, hey, go inside. He, they gave her like a warning, and then they started shooting the block up, okay? This lets me know, number one, that when they pull the trigger, it's not an emotional decision. Number two, they know the risk of what they're about to do because they warn, okay, this woman they see with kids, so they, they, they warn them, hey, go inside. And then they start shooting the block up because they know what they're about to do. They know what they're doing is wrong. They know what they're doing is evil, quite frankly. So here's my issue that I have with it. At some point in time, I don't want to hear about this is because of racism and slavery and systematic racism and all these cards that we like to play to avoid having this conversation. At some point in time, yes, I nobody can say Brother Marcus doesn't talk about the police injustice. I talk about George Floyd. I talk about the thing with Ahmaud Arbery. I've talked about the effects of the great migration when the slaves were free. But why can't we talk about this too? Stop playing that card and justifying it by saying, oh, well, it's because of this and it's because we don't have resources. No, the bottom line is they knew what they were doing was wrong and they still did it anyway. At some point in time, we got to have this conversation and start holding our people accountable. They knew the, the guys, there's this young, beautiful young black boy. He's three years old, just got shot over Father's Day weekend. Then they had, what, 101 shootings uh, this weekend. And the weekend before, it was like 38. And the weekend before, I mean, hitting record highs of killings. Stop blaming everything on, on, on the race card. Because this lets me know that these people know what they're doing is wrong. They know the risk. They know that there's kids on the block and they still choose to make the decision to shoot anyway. So they have to be held accountable for that. I give you another story before I'm going to go into these facts. I was on that side of Chicago one time picking up my son when they were over there and I'm pushing him in the stroller and I'll never forget. I'm walking to the store. I'm going to get him some snacks. And this was, was, was when I was in South Korea and I came back for a visit. And there was this group of about, man, five or six, 14 and 15 year olds, they look. And they made a circle around me while I was walking around the block. And they said, yo, let's get this nigga. That's what, that's what they said. 
I, I know some of you gonna get offended by uh, but the language, but that's exactly what they said. They said, let's get this dude, for no reason. I'm not gang affiliated. You don't know who I am. You don't know what I'm capable of, but your mentality is you see somebody walking down the block, pushing their kid in the stroller, and you wanna jump me or rob me or do whatever. And they made a circle around me. And in my mind, I started praying. I said, Lord, okay, if I didn't have my son, I'm not really worried. These They were like skinny kids. I'm like, I could take them. I'm going to hurt one of them. But then I got to let go of the stroller. So I was debating, should I run? You know, should I pick up the stroller and just run? What should I do? If I let go, are they going to hit my son? I don't put nothing. And, and here's the thing. I don't want to hear about, oh, systematic rape. These people know what they're doing is wrong. So we got to hold them accountable. If my if my son had got shot while uh, my child's mother was over there, I don't want to hear about old oh, systematic racism. They know when they're pulling the trigger that what they're doing is wrong. They know that. So let's stop making excuses. And it's time to hold people accountable with the same energy. How is it that we could look at George Floyd? Right. And I'm not the kind of person to you know, throw people's past and stuff like that, you know, or whatever. Wrong is wrong, period. But think about the innocence of a baby, the innocence of a three-year-old, a four-year-old. I remember a couple of weeks ago, there was a little six-year-old, beautiful black girl. And people are so desensitized when it happens in the hood that they will see a cop kneeling on the back of a black man's neck and they want to march and they want to tear stuff up. But then when they see a baby, they, they don't really feel anything too much because they're so used to it. And quite honest, if we're being quite honest, a lot of people have really given up. And I'm gonna be honest with you. A lot of black people are afraid to hold other black people accountable because either one or two things is gonna happen. You're gonna go to the hood and you're gonna try to hold these people accountable and they're going to shoot you or they're going to hurt you. And this is and here's the other card that I want y'all to stop playing. Stop playing this card about, oh, when black people kill black people, they go to jail. That's not true. I'm from Chicago. There's multiple cases where people are getting shot in broad daylight and people are seeing it. But because we say no snitching, okay, justice never happens. There's multiple babies that have been killed and there's never been no justice. But we're not marching about that. We're not. So stop saying that. Every every time we bring this conversation up, people got a cop out. Oh, it's systematic racism. Like these people don't know that what they're doing is wrong. Or, oh, black people go to jail when it happens. Then I saw another one that somebody brought up. They said, well, why do we talk about black on black crime? Because 85, 87% of white people kill white people and we don't have white people crime. Uh, we don't talk about white on white crime. But watch this. If you want to talk about statistics, when we say that more white people get killed by police every year, and this is a fact, people say, no, no, no. Well, the percentage of blacks getting killed is more. So they want to talk about statistics because I think one year it was like, uh, you know, 40 something white people got killed and then maybe 30 something, 20 something black people. And so right there, we don't want to hear the statistic. But then for something else, we want to use the statistic. But the reality is black people are killing black people at a way higher rate than any other race. All right. And let's be honest. Let's be honest. I know I'm going to lose some of you, but the biggest threat to black people right now is other black people, not the police. I'm more scared uh, for the kids in the hood than I am something happened to them by a police officer. And that's facts. Because if you look at the statistics and you look at the numbers, and I brought it up um, a couple videos ago, okay? You got 38 black people killed by unarmed, uh, 38 unarmed black people killed by police in like 2018. And the number has consistently went down. Go look up the stats for yourself. It was like 38, 27, 16, then it was like down to seven. But you know what number has not gone uh, gone down? Black people killing black people. And we gotta stop making all these excuses about why this and why that and just hold people accountable because no matter what you say the justification is, they know what they're doing is wrong, but the truth is we're, we're scared. But a lot of black people are scared to hold other black people accountable. I always say that if Dr. King was here right now, they would beat Dr. King up. Preaching the stuff he was preaching, they would beat him up. It's facts. So we got to get the same energy about, because guess what? God cares about those babies that are shot in the hood. God cares about the babies that are killed in the womb. He does. 
All right. So the biggest threat to black people, and this is not a popular message, is black people. The growth of black people. We, we talk about being the minority. If you look at the history of Planned Parenthood, OK, it has a racist history. They put fertility clinics in the white neighborhoods and they put abortion clinics in the black neighborhoods. And that was strategic. But we defend it. Guess what? God cares about those babies in the womb. He says, I knew you in the womb. More black men and women and babies have been killed by abortion and gang violence than anything else. It's not even close, but we don't like having this conversation. We're desensitized to it. That's why we get emotional when we see what happened to George Floyd and it's wrong. But then when we talk about this stuff, it's like, eh, eh. And the truth is, is because some of us have, have given up on the hood. Now I go to the hood and, and we preach in the hood and we, we've done block parties and things like that in the hood. But the reality is, People are not marching and protesting. Let, let's, let's just be all the way real. You see all these people who claim to be scared of the police, right? But they're in the police face. They're riding in the police face. They're throwing stuff at the police. They're cussing at the police. Why? Because you're not really scared of the police. We act like, oh, I'm, I'm so scared of the police. Now, let's be honest. I do get a little tense when I have interactions with cops because of the things that happen and some of the things, like I said, I try to be fair. Right? I've had a lot of bad experiences with cops in Chicago. I've been wrongfully detained and, and arrested several times. And I did a video on that on the other day, but guess what? I'm still more worried about going in the hood. I've had way more bad experiences in the hood, getting jumped, getting beat, uh, beat up, having guns pulled on me and shot. So the, the biggest threat to my life has not been the police. It's been other African Americans. Okay, and that's a fact. That's a fact. You people got to stop being fake, right? We we say, "Oh, we don't want the police to profile uh, against the black man, but a lot of black people when you go to the hood, you lock your car door. If you see certain I know in Chicago, you see certain types of guys on the block or sitting on the porch, a lot of people cross over to the other side. So let's be all the way real. People are in the police face, throwing stuff at them, spitting on them, cussing them out because they don't, they're not scared. They don't think the police are going to do anything to them. They think the police are going to take it, but they will not do that in the hood in the name of, hey, we want the violence to stop and we're here to hold you guys accountable. Not going to happen because you're afraid, right? So let's see. I, I brought up the statistics. What else could I talk about? God cares about the abortions. Uh, Planned Parenthood has killed more than the KKK. So I, I, I reiterate this one more time, and then I'm, I'm going to show you what I feel is the solution when people are talking about defunding the police. All right? The reality is, when you look at the facts, and it's not popular to say it, the biggest threat to black people right now is black people. Now, is there a history, you know, uh, with, with the slavery and things? Yes, that does have some effect on it, but it doesn't change the fact. Okay, when I, let, me, let me break that down. Let, let me not fly through that. When the slaves were set free, we had this thing called the Great Migration. And they didn't get paid, they didn't get nothing, they were just free. And so they had to move into the poorest places in Chicago and Detroit when they came from the South to the North. And a lot of those hoods over here in Chicago is a result of that. And that's the reality. So we do need to address that. We do need to confront that. But it doesn't change the fact that when a young guy like he told my um, child's mother, they said, go inside before they started shooting up the block. It doesn't change the fact that they know what they're doing is wrong and they're still doing it anyway. They're not sitting there thinking, oh, I'm doing this because the, and, and some of them are not even, see, here's the crazy thing. Some people are not even shooting and killing. Thank you, Lord, for bringing this to my memory. People always say that, you know, the violence and the crime is because a lack of opportunities, because people are poor and they're trying to come out. That's not true. First of all, there's a demonic aspect to it. Some people out there are just killing to be killing. Some people will just shoot you for nothing. They're not, they're not drug dealers. They don't got money. They're not fighting over the turf. They're not fighting over the block. They'll shoot you and take a life because you disrespected me. That's it. You disrespected me, so now I'm going to take your life. I felt like you disrespected me. And so a life means nothing to me, so I'll take your life, okay? So I'm, I'm going to end it with this. You know, you got the rap music. Everybody's pulling down statues and stuff like that. 
where where do we draw the line? Because you know, in in rap, we've disrespected women, and we've had a slave mentality in rap. You know, promoting drugs and the gangster lifestyle. So so where do they draw the line of what they're going to tear down and pull down? When are we going to hold these rappers accountable who have made millions of dollars preaching and promoting this kind of lifestyle, glamorizing it to our young black men because it does have an effect? All right. So the last thing I want to talk about is this. Defunding the police is something that uh, people have been talking about doing. Let me tell you why defunding the police is not going to work. And I know people argue it doesn't mean abolishing the police. It means taking some of the money away um, and giving it to other resources where one of the things they were saying, we'll have people who will go out instead of the police who are unarmed to address certain situations. Right now, watch this. I was at this park yesterday and this this is not the hood. This is the suburbs. And all the parks in Chicago are closed, right? They got like a wood over the basketball hoop so people can't shoot. And you're not supposed to be in the playground. So I'm, I'm running around the track. I'm trying to lose this belly that you guys keep talking about, okay? And they uh, there's this, this group of, I don't know, they look Middle Eastern. Some of them look uh, Hispanic. You know, they were in the park, uh, young boys, 15, 16, 17. And they send somebody who's not a police they pull up in the government car. She's got the, the polo with the with the logo. She works for the city. And she says, hey, you guys, the park is closed. You're not supposed to be here. And the kids proceed to just disrespect this woman. They make fun of her. They're riding around her with the bus. This is not even in the hood, okay? And I'm, I'm sitting there watching. I'm saying this is exactly what's going to happen with the front of the police. Because stop acting like these kids are not disrespectful. Stop acting like there's not bad people out there. People acting like, oh, the police are so bad. Stop acting like there's not people out here shooting, robbing, looting, being disrespectful, beating people up for no reason other than that's just what they want to do. The kids were getting a kick out of disrespecting this lady. And it wasn't until she said, oh, I'm, I'm going to have to call the police that they're like, oh, okay, okay. So you're going to, you're going to, this is what I believe we should do. Number one, if black people are as, jacked up as we say right because every time something bad happens in the black community we blame systematic racism and 400 years of oppression so what we're really saying is that black people are messed up they're jacked up right and rightfully so if you think about it with all the stuff that happened in america so if that's the case we got to get counseling now i'm not going to say make counseling mandatory because then people get offended by that but we talk about reparations, right? Well, let's do that. Let's get, if I was in the government and some kind of office, I would push, let's get money, okay, into the hood to give these kids access to counseling. If we're blaming everything on systematic racism and oppression, and that's what's creating these mindsets, let's get money, all right? Let's give, let's give reparations, but not just give it to people so they can waste. Because if, if our mind is already jacked up, and then you give this money to people, they're not going to appreciate it. I, I this is this this is the cold hard facts. If I just go to the hood right now, giving out hundreds of thousands of dollars, people are going to blow it because they don't have the mindset to handle it. Uh, they're not going to be a good steward of it. So let's put it into something useful and give people the option to get counseling. And then here with the kids, right? When we talk about the schools, let's give the kids an opportunity to get educated. All right. And something outside of what they know. Some people have a mindset because all they know is the hood. And this is where I always get on white people. Don't judge a, a dude for joining a gang when you didn't grow up in the hood, because a lot of them, they join gangs for protection and different reasons. And you, I never would join a gang. I wouldn't do that. I just don't understand why they would be in a gang or I would never be a baby mama. There's a lot. If you live in the hood, your mentality might be different. If you have to, you know, be in somebody else's shoes and you had to walk to school every day, not knowing if you're going to get jumped, not knowing if you're going to get shot, you know what I'm saying? Not having uh, d access to different resources, you might join a gang too. OK, so that's that's just a little side note. But what I think that we should do is we take money. Right. And for the kids that are showing promise in the schools. Right. The ones that are really getting after it and they're trying to make a difference and they got that mindset. I'm going to get out the hood. 
give them opportunities, you know what I'm saying? When you see that they're doing well, take them out of that situation, whether you got to bust them, pick them up or whatever, to other places where they can get educated and see another side of the world, all right? Another side of America. A lot of people have certain perspectives because the only people I be around are people with a thug mentality. The only people I be around are people with a defeated mentality. The only people I be around are people who got a prejudice mentality, a racist mentality, a hater mentality. We And we see this in everything. This is one of the things that I love about the army. You know that kids, they're not born racist, they're taught. They're taught to be racist. So you have these white kids who grow up in the middle of nowhere, places that I visited like the Ozarks, I believe in Mississippi. They're, they don't see black people like that. All they know is what they see on social media. All they know is the videos that black people share of black people beating each other up, yelling world star, acting like it's funny. That's what they know, that's what they see. And then you go to these places and you walk in Walmart and they're like, man, I, like I've never seen a black guy before. And so that's another way that racism is formed because you're not exposed to it. It's the same thing in the hood. If all I'm exposed to is the hood mentality and the rap music that's telling me this is the easy way out. Because think about it. Think about a young man that he's growing up in the hood. He don't, he might not feel smart. He might not feel like he's too academic. And then you got this rapper saying, man, I sold drugs. I did this. Look at look at my big chain. Look at my look at my nice car. Look at my fine woman. I got everything that I want. He's looking like, man, that's the route for me. Just like I joined the army because I didn't like school. A lot of dudes are saying, man, that it's like it's like uh, all these rappers who've been preaching about drugs and stuff like that. They're recruiters, just like in the army. Without even knowing it, because you're glamorizing it. And so the young guys are looking, they say, man, that's the way that I'm gonna go. And they're, t they're showing me this, I got to be hard. I got to get me a gun. I got to be like this. I got to be like that. They're recruiting. All right. So one of the things that we got to do is about coming against that mindset. I right? And it's the same thing in the hood. I know some people in the hood that are racist toward white people, prejudiced toward white people, but they never leave the hood. And white people don't be going in the hood like that. So then it's like they don't even have any interactions with white people to be racist. It's the same thing on the other side. There's people right now that we're looting, that we're smashing stuff, and guess what? They've never even experienced racism because they've never been around the opposite race. And that's the thing that just blows my mind and drives me crazy. That's the power of, of just, just feelings and emotions, okay? Because if we, if we lay it all out, like we said, and we look at the facts, what is the biggest thing that is killing black people right now? Other black people. It's no if, ands, buts about it. The, the problem is we try to downplay one and we don't want to have the conversation. Abortions, right? You guys got to go watch this interview on The Breakfast Club. Man, this woman, she destroyed them. She went up there with three body bags. I mean, it was Charlemagne was the only one who seemed kind of, um, you know, intellectual and he kind of understood what was going on. But man, she was dusting the mother two off real bad. And I don't usually watch, you know, whole interviews like that. I watched the whole 59 minutes. I posted it on my Facebook. It's educational. It's informative. I think any African-American uh, individual should watch it just to challenge your perspective. And that's the other thing we got to do. White people and black people. We got to challenge our perspective. Some of you think the way that you think because that's the only people you surround yourself with. And that was my point about being in the army. You get in the army, you be around all kinds of different people, man. I saw white country dudes uh, link up with black hood dudes and become best friends because that environment was created. So it is possible. But if you look at the world and you look at the media with all the agendas, because people are making money off of racism. People are making money off of the division that's created between uh, black people and white people. People are, are um, getting elected into office based off of the division that is created between black people and white people. So there's some people in power who don't want it to go away. Look into who funds Black Lives Matter. People taking advantage of black people's struggles. George Soros. He says, oh, okay, I got something for you. I'm going I'm to give you funding. Black Lives Matter got so much money they could fix the hoods right now. At least some of them. Black Lives Matter raised a lot of money. But guess what? Here's the crate, man. Y'all not ready for me today. They got so much money they could fix the hoods, right? But they spend most of their time fighting the smaller battle. 
right? Now, it's nationally televised what happened to George Floyd. And I say it again, it's awful, it's wrong. But the reality is 36 unarmed black men killed in 2018. Then it was 20 something. Then it was like 17 something. Then it went down to seven. A hundred something people shot in Chicago this weekend. 38 the last weekend. Another almost uh, 60 something the other weekend. Think about that for a second. That's in a weekend compared to a day, not including abortions. Think about that for a second. 36 in a year, 20 something in a year, seven in a year compared to almost 100 in a weekend. What's the biggest thing that's hurting us and killing us and exterminating us? And we got all that money and funding and we say, oh, well, you know, we need resources. It's enough black people with money to make a difference. It's enough, enough black people in Chicago with lots of money that can make a difference. But here's the real truth. Here's the real truth that a lot of you not gonna like. These people who got money, these rappers who got money, these athletes who got money, many of them know if I go on the hood and I build something, they gonna tear it up. Just like the playgrounds, just like the community centers, the gangs are gonna go in there, they gonna shoot it up. Go, go look up this old stand-up that Chris Rock did a couple years. It's been floating around ago. Uh, uh, it's been floating around recently. And I'm surprised they haven't canceled him. But he said that all the things that white people don't like about black people, black people even hate it more. He's like, oh, you know, we don't do certain things because we know they're going to shoot it up. We know they're going to destroy it. We know that we're going to tear it up. So then what's the answer? Y'all know what part of the answer is. The biggest part of the answer for me is that's why I go preach. And I say, hey, there is a way out. There is a God who sees you. There is a God that will give you strength, that will help you get out of the hood, that can change your life. And then the second part being practical is education and counseling. We need, if, 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 if we are as jacked up as we say, every time something bad happens in the black community, that means that we got to start getting people into counseling. But a lot of black people don't want to go to counseling. You even see that's why a lot of marriages fail and struggle because these people need to go to counseling. All right. So I don't want to hear no, I don't want to hear no nothing about, um, I don't want to hear anything about, um, Lord, I just had a, a memory freeze. I don't want to hear nothing about, <laughs> I, I guess I said enough. I love you guys. Be blessed. Be encouraged in Jesus name. Have a wonderful evening.